The Ravens' new look offense is creating a lot of buzz today. With the addition of former rushing king Derrick Henry, Baltimore now features a unit that has Lamar Jackson, Henry, Zay Flowers, and Mark Andrews. Don't forget about Rashad Bateman as well. Derrick Henry's arrival means offensive coordinator Todd Monken's got two Heisman winners to work with. It's two years, $16 million. It could reach 20, including $9 million of that fully guaranteed in his first year. Sticking with the running backs, Joe Mixon went from reportedly being released on Monday to getting traded on Tuesday. Since he gets a late round pick from Houston, and Mixon goes from Joe Burrow to C.J. Stroud. Bengals also reaching an agreement on Zach Moss to replace Mixon. There's a new queen in the Steel City after Patrick Queen agreed to a reported three-year $41 million deal with Pittsburgh. Queen joins a front seven, which includes T.J. Watt and Cam Hayward, who will be tackling Derrick Henry at least twice a year. Lots of AFC North news today. Senior NFL insider Josina Anderson spoke with Jameis Winston, who told her he's joining the Browns. The veteran quarterback still thinks he's a starter, but told Josina he's ready to serve as Deshaun Watson's backup in the 2024 season. Marcus Mariota headed to the DMV after playing this past season as a backup to Jalen Hurts in Philly. It's a reported one-year deal with a base value of 6 mil that could be 10 with the Commanders. Washington has the second overall pick, and it's expected they'll take a quarterback presumably Drake May or Jaden Daniels. Mariota, former second overall pick in his own right. Former second round pick Drew Locke signing a one-year deal as well. He goes from the Pacific Northwest to the Big Apple for $5 million bucks and will join a quarterback room with Daniel Jones in New York. Taking a look at the notable deals on Tuesday. One thing we did not talk about, the purging Dolphins with salary cap issues did reach a deal with Shaq Barrett. And a reminder, no deal is official until after 4 p.m. Wednesday. All right, I'm Tommy Tran with Ligier Ducible and Brady Quinn. So, Ligier, I'm going to start with you first. There was a team I didn't see during that little rip and list. The Dallas Cowboys, <laughs> Man, a loser for you here. They are a loser because they haven't signed anybody in free agency. I believe they did sign their long snapper back. But you talk about a team that has been saying that they're a Super Bowl-ready team for the last few years. And not only that, Brady, they lost a few players in free agency. Yeah. Tyler Biot is going elsewhere. You saw Dorrance Armstrong, who's been a mainstay on that defensive line. He left as well. Dante Fowler, another guy that's left. Now, again, they're probably going to have to do some business with some of their own players. Michael Parsons could technically get a new deal. So can C.D. Lamb. And also Dak Prescott's cap number is astronomical. So they do need to lower his cap number, but a little bit surprised that they haven't already done that business with Dak Prescott to lower that cap number so they can add pieces. I didn't even talk about Tyron Smith. He's technically a free agent. He could be gone as well. So you're talking about two of your five starters up front when that offensive line has been a mainstay for the Dallas Cowboys going back the last five years. So to me, the Dallas Cowboys are losers uh, on and free agency so far. Yeah, we all, we all know the expectations are to win a Super Bowl yeah. in Dallas. Now, they don't have a ton of cap space in a yeah. part because of what you touched on there with Dak Prescott's contract. And I think maybe part of the hesitation in restructuring it is if you come to the player and you ask him to, to lessen his cap hit, that means you're going to be paying him a little bit more up front in cash and a signing bonus and probably extending him out yep. so you don't hurt those future years under the cap. And they might not feel like they're ready to make that commitment to Dak Prescott at this point. So uh, they've got a number of considerations. Their, their center, uh, left guard, uh, two spots they could potentially look at. Defense when healthy, and I don't know there's many holes there. Yep. But offensively speaking, too, Deuce Vaughn right now is your number one running back exactly. heading into the season. So that was another position I thought they were gonna, going to address. It's not a deep running back class in the draft. So a little bit surprising the Dallas Cowboys have been so quiet. But you mentioned some of the guys who are leaving the team. Dan Quinn, they're, they're their division <laughs> rival now, head coach of the Washington the Commanders. He's like, yeah, I'll go ahead and take Tyler Biotis. I'll, I'll go ahead and take those guys over here on my team. Brady, I want to touch on something you talked about. Do you think there's – any scenario where Dak Prescott could play out the final year of this deal with the cap number being as high as it is this year? It's hard to imagine that. Yeah. Um, and obviously there's still some time here in, in free agency in the offseason, as Tommy pointed out. Nothing's official yet until Correct. tomorrow. But, um, it, it, you know, again, they're going to have to make some sort of commitment. He's got 
Jerry Jones and Stephen Jones oh, in a really tough all the spot. Leverage. <laughs> He's got all the leverage in the world, and they've got to come to the table to him to deal with it if they want to try to improve their position at this point. So. Uh, I, I don't think he's going to play under this contract. I think yeah. they're going to have to do something, but the, it surprised me it's taken this long For sure. into the offseason. And, and to that point, Michael Gallup is a guy they've already said that he can go seek a trade because I think what his cap number is, they're trying to get that off the books if they potentially could you know, maybe get some conversation in the trade for him. Yeah. Brady, let's get to one of your winners. The Atlanta Falcons remain winners here on day two. Yeah, look, anytime you get a quarterback, and that's really your most glaring need, and, and that's the whole point of the offseason, to find a guy you feel like can help you win the division, you're going to be a winner in this case. And, and the Atlanta Falcons and Kirk Cousins are winners. Kirk Cousins with the deal he was able to sign, you know, four years, $180 million. A hundred of that is guaranteed at signing with a $50 million signing bonus. Ooh. But they also add to their wide receiver core. So that's not just Drake London. Now they've got a nice number two in Darnell Mooney. Still got Kyle Pitts at the tight end. He's versatile. B. John Robinson in the backfield. So a plenty of weapons to go around. So the Atlanta Falcons and the Kirk Cousins, in my opinion, are big time winners. Brady, you talked about it. As soon as you get a quarterback in free agency and one that you feel like you can win with, you're winners, right? Because the Atlanta Falcons were pushing for the playoffs and they didn't get adequate quarterback play at all last year. So get a guy like Kirk Cousins who We'll be familiar with this offense. Let's not forget Raheem Morris comes from the L.A. Rams. He brings Zach Robinson with him. Well, that's what Kevin O'Connell was with Sean McVay. So a lot of the terminology is probably going to be similar. It's not like he has to start from square one uh, learning a whole new offense. And I love the Darnell Mooney pickup, too, in the slot. You talked about it, right, having Drake London on the outside. But you needed a number two receiver, even though you got Kyle Pitts. I honestly thought they would go a little bit cheaper and maybe get Tyler Boyd. But I can't be mad at them for getting a young, good slot in the NFL. Yeah. Once the Cousins news came down, the Atlanta Falcons immediately became the betting favorite in mm. the division. It's already minus 110 over at FanDuel. And Brady, during that little rip, their highlight of Kirk Cousins, we saw him torch the Carolina Panthers. Carolina is a loser for you here. Yeah, look, I understand what they're doing. They're trying to solidify the interior of their offensive line with the pickups of, of Lewis and Hunt up front. Still maybe need to look at their, their center position, but they need to find a number one wide receiver. Like we were yeah. saying that all last year, aside from the offensive issues that they were facing, they don't have any speed, anyone that can break down the field. That's a big time concern. And, and the Brian Burns trade, it, it's maybe a little bit retroactive in the sense of what they could have got from him a year prior if they would have traded him then, having more draft capital to make up for what they've lost over the course of the past few years now in the Christian McCaffrey trade, the Brian Burns trade, trading up to get Bryce Young. Uh, they just have not fared well so far. So I think they're making their way. We'll see what other additions they can make to this roster to help out. But anytime you trade an edge rusher like Brian Burns, I'm not sure you're making your team better in the short term. Yeah, Brady, I'm with you. I think they're big losers in free agency, and it's not just because of the pieces they've been trying to add, but it's the pieces they've lost. And then when you look at the, the, the full screen that we just had up, essentially trading away Christian McCaffrey, Brian Burns, and then also DJ Moore didn't really net you much in regards to getting capital gains back. So when you look at the, the, the Panthers, yes, the offensive line was atrocious last year. You have to protect Bryce Young. Really like the signing of, of Hunt. That you, that you talked about earlier and Lewis as well in the interior. Looks like Austin Corbett will move from guard to center, but they still have issues at the tackle position. Iki Kwanu has really struggled as a guy that you took in the top 10. And to your point, who is the guy that's threatening you down the field? They don't have a true number one receiver. And the thing that really puzzles me, Brady, is this was actually a good defense last year, but they let all their top key pieces leave. Frankie Louvu goes in commanders. You lose Brian Burns. Now, they did just sign Ashawn Robinson, which I think is a really good defensive tackle. You could pair him with uh, Derek Brown on the inside. But who's rushing the quarterback on the edge? So, like, to me, they're losers because the one area that you could kind of, you know, depend on was the defense, but now it's a whole new looking defense. I think when you look at how you build a roster, a roster construction, right, you have to have the quarterback, you have to have the guys protecting, the guys rushing, the guys catching, the guys covering, the guys catching. And right now, I think if you look at the roster right now, to a lot of the points you're bringing up, a lot of holes there, a lot of question marks there right now. So I understand they're in a rebuild mode. It's year two with Bryce Young, but David Tepper's run so far as their owner, you have to question whether or not he's meddled a bunch. Dan Morgan just got there, but he's already run through a number of coaches really early on in those contracts, and it just it seems like it's a bit of a disaster so far. Our graphic right there is highlighting the lack of a first-round pick, so the draft capital-wise in that Burns deal, by the way, Giants do give up a second-round pick here in 24 and another pick there in 25. Lee Jay, make it back to one of your winners here. So we go coast to coast. Let's go to LA and the Rams. 
There's nothing like good trench play, Tommy. <laughs> Offensive line, this is why the Rams are winners. Sean McVay understands to win the game, you have to be solidified in the trenches. And for them to get Jonah Jackson and re-sign Kevin Dawson, because I think you have to add that in regards to why they're winners in free agency. Now you move Steve Avila inside. Brady, defensive tackles before they play the Rams, better eat an extra uh, steak in pregame meal because those dual blocks, those double teams, it's going to be a hard day inside for defensive tackles. And then Kobe Parkinson is a blocking tight end. So Sean McVay is kind of letting you know what they're going to do. They're going to come out and run the ball, try to take a lot of pressure off of Matt Stafford because he is getting up there in age, even though he can still throw it around the field. But I love what, what I saw from Kyron Williams and an offensive line that got only better through free agency. Yeah, I, I love these moves for Matt Stafford protection, but Kyron Williams as well, specifically oh running back. Oof. I mean, this is this is a dream for him as he's continuing on his career. Kind of was a breakout star a little bit last year, uh, and especially since he's gotten into the league when he's been healthy. And so it helps out the running game, helps out Stafford, but also as you kind of touched on, if they can run the football, you've got Cooper Cup, Puka Nakua, you resigned Demarcus Robinson. That's a nice trio of wide receivers, too. I think when you want to spread it out a little bit, you could find some hay there. So I love what the Rams are doing. They exceeded expectations last yeah, year. They did. <clears throat> They've exceeded my expectations so far, so far with the under free agency. I think a underrated under radar signing <clears throat> it was Darius Williams bringing him back to the Rams. A guy already knows the system and can be solidified at one of the starting corner spots. Brady Quinn, let's get to what are your winners here. Jacksonville's been quite active the first two days here, but it's specifically what Trevor Lawrence is kind of getting from all these moves. Yeah, he's a winner. Look, they've helped solidify the interior of the <clears throat> offensive line resigning after Cleveland. They got Mitch Morris there. Then you bring in, you know, guys on the outside like Gabe Davis, uh, as well as Devin Duvernay, who helped out as a wide receiver, but also as a return man. So you've got that on defense, Ronald Darby, Darnell Savage. <clears throat> Much more economical moves, but I think they'll get at just as good of a level of play as what they're getting, if not better than what they had last year. So uh, pretty active for the Jacksonville Jaguars after a disappointing season. But I think all moves that are needed and more than anything else really help elevate the level of play of Trevor Lawrence. Yeah, Brady, we were just talking about the, the trench warfare that the Rams have. You got to think the Jacksonville Jaguars have done the same thing because they really struggled in the interior. They traded for Ezra Cleveland halfway through last year, and then they signed him to an extension. I think the restructure of Brandon Scherf should be up there as well, right. being able to get that done as well. And then tagging um, Josh Allen Josh on the Allen outside. Huge, yeah. you got to have somebody that can wreck the game as a pass rusher, and that's exactly what Josh Allen did. Now, they need to get that deal done with them. I was going to say, well, they got time. Yeah. They'll get to the summer, yeah. and as we know, deadlines do deals. I was going to say, you agree, though. They'll get that done, deal oh, done. Oh, for sure. Yeah. For sure. So getting that deal done will be, be monumental. And I think them also going to a traditional 4-3 defense, or Ryan Nielsen as a defensive coordinator, will not only help Josh Allen, but it'll help Walker on the other side as well. That's one of the reasons, too, why if you look at Trevor Lawrence, yeah. he might not get his extension done this offseason because they got to worry about Josh Allen. Then a year from now, mm. maybe then it's Trevor Lawrence. Mm. But that also may play an impact to what Calvin Ridley could potentially get paid if True. he does come back. But not to go back to one of the losers, but like Calvin Ridley should be in Carolina. Now, yeah. There's no way with his speed and ability, there's no way if he was on the free agent market that Carolina's not talking to him. Right now it's New England and Jacksonville still mm -hmm. where he wants to go back. So a bit surprising not to go back on that one, but just talking about yeah. where Calvin Ridley could end up being. And bigger picture, we've been having conversations about free agency, the running back position, getting all poached up because of what we think in the draft. Conversely, the wide receiver is kind of the opposite of that. Uh, yeah. uh, Liger, lastly for you, you've targeted the commanders here. So yeah. the question becomes, Washington a winner or a loser? A winner. I love what GM, new GM Adam Peters has done. They knew that they were struggling in the trenches on the offense and defensive line. They signed over Dan Quinn as the head coach, but on the offensive line, Nick Allegretti, right, has started in two Super Bowls with the Kansas City Chiefs. You bring him only over. Not only that, you still Dallas' center and Tyler Biotis, so not only do you get better, but you make your opponent weaker. And then you look on the defensive side, once they traded away Sweat and also Chase Young last year, they really struggled on that defensive front, so they've really fortified Right, Dorrance Armstrong is a guy who would start on most teams, but because he played for the Dallas Cowboys and was behind Michael Parsons and Demarcus Lawrence, he didn't start there. They also brought in Frankie Louvu. Brady, I'm telling you right now, this will probably be the most underrated signing in all of free agency. We saw what Michael Parsons did with the Cowboys. Now I'm calling, not calling Frankie Louvu Michael Parsons, 
but he has that same skill set where he can be on the edge, rush the quarterback, but it is also very athletic and is a good uh, dropping and coverage linebacker, off the ball linebacker. He's going to bring a physical presence to that defensive line, and we know that's how Dan Quinn wants to be. He wants to attack, right? He wants the, the offense to dictate to, to him. He doesn't want to dictate to the offense. And with Frankie Louvu, you can do that. Now, name that should be on here. We were talking about this earlier today. Kendall Fuller, I think they should sign him back because right now they're struggling at the cornerback position. Fuller was one of their starting quarterbacks. Emmanuel Forbes really struggled last year. I think if you add a corner like Fuller to this defense, what they've already done so far, then this uh, commander's uh, offseason has looked really good in free agency. They're, they're setting themselves up for a soft landing with whoever they take a quarterback in number two. I mean, Marcus Murray there as well who has got plenty of experience as a starting quarterback, but it could be a backup for them. You saw Jeremy Chin, too, on a one-year deal. They're getting good football players. Correct. They may not be making big splashes with what they're doing, but they're helping to solidify the offensive line. You mentioned the Doris Armstrong signing. Look, he's a new head coach. He's implementing a new defensive system. Bring along some of those guys with you that were in Dallas that helped you become successful and uh, really improving that defense during your time there. That helps with the transition for all the players that are joining this team. So they've also done a tremendous job, I think, so far building out this roster. Truly a, a new era of Washington football with the ownership group, head coach you mentioned, front office, and then what we anticipate will be the future franchise quarterback. Brady, Leger, appreciate you as always with the winners and losers segment here on HQ. A reminder, keep up to date on the very latest with your team or your favorite player. Go to the CBS Sports app, and if you haven't already, scan that QR code you see right there on your screen.